everyone. Welcome to this edition of Scientifically Beautiful on the Life is Tough, but you can be tougher network. And I'm so excited today to introduce two of my good friends um, that are amazing, amazing people that have a vast range of experience from healthcare to wellness to business and have written books and have traveled all over the world to start companies in the hopes to empower people and to make people's life better. And so we have a lot to talk about today. Day, I want to say hi to Jorgen Tronsberg. Am I saying that right, Jorgen? Yeah, you <laughs> actually pronounced it perfectly, so thank you. <laughs> and Gazala Javine. Um, and we've had her on the show before, and she's an amazing person. But this duo together started a company called NGRC which is a next generation research center out of Cyprus. And I'm going to let them talk about it, but they've done amazing things together again in the areas of business, science, healthcare, and a lot of different areas. And I think it's very important because I've had the opportunity to work with each these two individuals as they launch different programs to really help others, not just in Cyprus, but, but around the world. So I'm going to give them the opportunity to talk about it. But before we start, at root, we're trying to clean out the body. So we're trying to take the waste out. And then we're also trying to supplement because once you clean the cell and clean the body, you've got to put the right things into the body. We are a company dedicated to non-GMO, vegan, clean products, organic. And I think this is very important when we're developing products. One of my favorite products is Root Clean Slate. And so I want you guys to think about when you write on a whiteboard, if you write on it all day, if you don't wipe that whiteboard off, then it's dirty. So with the Zeolite product, we're able to really clean the slate, get rid of things and start over. So we have a product called Zero In. This particular product is able to really help people focus by affecting the neurotransmitters of the brain. It's also able to help people with just daily life and energy levels. We used a lot of ingredients in this particular formula, a lot of natural ingredients, amino acids that the body really needs. So if you look at our first round of products and then what we're coming out with, you really are going to have something that you use on a daily basis. Just like pharmaceutical and biotech, we are a nutraceutical company because our goal is not to end today. Our goal is to have a bright future where we help people daily. Your body needs a foundation and it needs a strong foundation and that's what we're giving people. The most important thing is yes, getting imported if he has the right kind of people around you. It's always like a collaboration. It's always like a teamwork. I don't see it like <laughs> the most important thing. What we all are doing has such important piece and that kind of uh, like experience, the skills and when you are starting really to collaborate and you know everyone, it has a such important role, which is basically equal with each other. But yeah, uh, what is right is that I started up everything, what we call the Cyprus project. That is correct, because I know that that's just a little bit of the main topic, what we're going to talk about it. So yes, in that regard, I can accept that, that I'm started up with it. This was actually, I okay, so let's give a little bit the background here. I am a Swedish uh, uh, man. Um, I'm 56 years old. Actually, I'm turning now very, very soon 57. Uh, wow. Raised. <laughs> God's made an impression. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's not that old, Jorgen, but go ahead. That's what I was going to no, ask. No, no, no. Hey, uh, thank you. I mean, I still, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, I, I still feel somewhat young. I had a little accident, injured my uh, ribs, and then I felt really like 56 plus, plus, plus for a few days now, but I'm feeling much better. But normally, yes. Uh, so I was... Um, in a very, very young age, I'm going to make this story very long, short here now. I had a back problem, like a really severe one, chronic pain in the, already in the age of 13. Long story short, the uh, normal allopathic medicine could not help me. My parents, 
my parents took me to a chiropractor. This guy helped me. He then became like a mentor. I decided to go into chiropractic school. I did that. I was very, very young. I saw my first patient in the age of 20 years old, became a chiropractor. I've always been so in interesting. It's like, what did this chiropractor actually do? He was also an acupuncturist, trained also like in China. So I felt a little bit but these are supposed to be the expert, like all the medical doctor, orthopedists, and kind of thing. They did fantastic job. So it, it was like nothing wrong with them. But I always, in very, very young age, wonder what actually did he do? Long story short, I became a chiropractor. I became also an acupuncturist from like traditional Chinese medicine in the age of 20, 21 there. Uh, and I have basically been devoting my whole life to to understand the body's ability to heal by itself. Uh, then I actually moved over to state. I started naturopathic uh, uh, school of medicine in Stockholm in Sweden, uh, moved over to the States, um, uh, finished up the school both in Stockholm and also entered like naturopathic school in the States. Uh, lived there over in California, actually San Francisco Bay Area for 12 years, moved back then to Sweden, which was the year 2000. Okay, that was the first, <laughs> first uh, background. Uh, five years ago, it's actually now a little bit more five years ago, I've been written three books. My last book was called Compassion, because I've been so incredibly in interested in compassion from a research point of view. I, uh, I knew the uh, professors in the Stanford University who was actually doing a lot of research about compassion. Her, her name is Emma Seppele. Uh, she was born in France, lived uh, most of her life in the States. She has Finnish uh, um, uh, background. So that's why I we were able to talk a little bit about Scandinavian, things like that. Uh, so I started to lecturing because that has been, even though if I've seen patients for all these years, which I'm not seeing right now because I have way too much to do, I uh, started to lecturing actually about compassion, became so almost obsessed, like, because it seems like there's reason. Why is the school system not having this kind of value? Well, why is the business not having this value? Why is not the health system having uh, like of this value? And that became my third book, which was called Compassion. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I uh, so I did so I did a huge tour in Sweden. I was lecturing all like all together in different uh, uh, like in different places for forty thousand people. There was in one of the lecture there was a married couple who was living here in Cyprus. Half of the time had a lot of collaboration with the university here. They approached me and said that we have discussed to find someone in the area of life science, especially the complementary medicine, who knowing like a lot of researchers uh, and building up a global research. That is how we started up. So I came down here. I came, I came down here without really knowing exactly what they really wanted to do. I was very impressed. I met people that were lined up with meetings and things like that. One of the meetings was with a health minister. And for me, who be just a regular guy coming down here and suddenly, and they didn't tell me that when I, before I came here more than I gonna meet like the key people, but someone with my simple background suddenly was sitting there with the health minister and he was telling me, so how can I help you? <laughs> yeah, what can I do for you? Long story short, yes, I know a lot of researchers uh, mainly in the state of California because there were live, and obviously in Sweden because I have had so many research science people come into my lecture, my speeches and things like that. Uh, so I have a huge network where, uh, when regarding that kind of uh, uh, things. When we talk about the researcher who is not happy where they're doing right now. They feel restricted. They don't feel that like they are able to do really what they wanted to do. I know a lot of medical doctors, especially from my country, because 
nothing wrong, but if you're a medical doctor, you have a license, you are very strict to keep yourself in allopathic medicine. So I so I contacted 17 uh, people, uh, which are my friends, which are knowing that they are interesting into more complementary medicine and tell and told them that I just came from Cyprus. I have met people who say that they want to build up a global research center in the area of life science and they want me to see if I can find a researcher. So these 17 people I arranged that we spent three days in a conference place um, hour north of Stockho uh, Stockholm and we just started to look into this and that's basically how we started these 70 people are still in the project and interesting um, and long story short during four years I went back and forward to Sweden and Cyprus 30 times oh wow I was I was wondering how many years that you yeah. worked on this project yeah uh, now is uh, it's 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 exactly five years and three months. How many hours a week do you think you spent on this global research project, Jorgen? And I'm, I'm asking because I think one of the things I tell people is it's not easy. Uh, you know, you you look, you and Gaza, Gazala are beautiful people. So it looks like, oh, they just walked in and they did this. <laughs> but I can imagine it's been hours and hours of work because it's, it's not easy to build a project like this. Yeah, no, I haven't really counted the hours, but thousand and thousand and thousand of hours. If you yeah. look at everything, I mean, uh, just to travel thirty times. But I, my, it's li my my personality is not that. How can I describe? It's not like I don't see the struggle to travel. I don't yeah. see the struggle. I mean, obviously, once in a while, it start to hit you that you feel exhausted. Here. But I see the opportunity. Okay, here we can doing something different. We're doing something where people are learning for. We're doing something where skillful, experienced people are dying for. And the most important thing, what I felt, was that here we can actually get government support. We can get, at that time, also talked about the investors and things like that, and really supporting, helping thousands of people, maybe even hundreds of thousands, maybe even millions of people. That was obviously like the vision, like the dream. And then as everything is, things are going up and down and things like that. But that has been my drive to really helping and supporting people who are suffering. It's not that the allopathic medicine doing something wrong or something bad, but have something alternative which yeah. is very often so less like invasive and uh, all this kind of thing, but do it by the books from science, doing solid science and research and this kind of thing. So that has been like the drive. And uh, yeah, and that's I, just, yeah. I commend you for that because I think that was one of the reasons I really uh, connected with you and Gazala because you guys, you you believe in traditional medicine, but you also understand the need for alternative choices yes. and for both of those to have research behind it. And I think one yes. of the things, you know, I was in pharmaceutical for years and in research for years. And one of the things that was really hard for me to transition more to the supplement world was the fact that I understood the science. I understood the literature, but there wasn't research behind products. And that's been the hardest thing for me because I went from a world of seven years, at least two years years of patient registries, right? But usually seven years of research before a product was launched. And of course, natural products, they have similarities, but what a lot of people don't understand is the manufacturing process can be very different and products can be have more bioavailability, more efficacy, better safety if they're made a certain way. So the fact that you all have put together this plan to integrate everything from stem cells to supplements to pharmaceutical products to biotech and wellness and health together um, I just know it's been a ton of work. And I also know that it's something that is very needed, Jorgen and Gazala. And I also think you chose such a strategic location because I've actually been to Cyprus. 
um, went from Cyprus to Lebanon and Syria, actually, to do talks and um, love that that area. But it's kind of a, a cross bridge. You know, it's an island where you're you have exposure to so many different countries. And I think it's going to be an amazing, successful project, what you guys are bringing together. So one of one of my questions, your goal is to get doctors there or people there or both for this project? Actually, both, <laughs> because both <laughs> both are really needing each other. <laughs> both yeah. are really yeah. needing each other. Uh, so that's as I mean, first is like like yourself and also I, I will very soon introduce Gasala when she came into the picture and her and her very important key role here also. But it's uh, it's basically to collect what I my aim has always been collect incredible, skillful, hopefully also experienced people, but skillful people who's coming from Valley, which is a little bit more softer. People are coming like more from the heart, like really like live in the compassion, how we listen to our, each other, how we respect each other, how we talk to each other. Basically, because that is going to be that that is not just going to be like like between colleagues. That is also going to be the interaction between the physician and the patients and basically everything uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, really. So it's. Um, that 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 part what I mentioned now has been incredibly important for me. Uh, without saying that this is right people and this is like the wrong people, but people who is like, as you know, there is a lot. The world out there is suffering. Yeah. Basically, yeah. Yeah. And if you look at like illness. And I'm not saying this is wrong with a lot of medical doctors because they are into a system when they have so little time with a patient. Yeah. The resources get it like uh, smaller and smaller. So, I mean, I know a lot, I have a lot of friends stopping see a patient because they feel that they, they cannot take it anymore. But to create a kind of environment, basically when we are, because whatever we give people, if we give um, pharmaceutical medicine or if we give allopathic treatment or if you give a nutraceutical supplement, whatever we're doing, the, the first impression when we meet a physician practitioner, like how we're listening and how we interact with each other, it's also a part of the healing. It, it yeah, is, absolutely. Uh, it, 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 it's so basic, actually, it's so common sense and still is not something uh, you find everywhere. Simple as that. Yeah. No, I agree. I, I think your approach of the mind, body, spirit, and soul, right, yeah. is is so important. I think that's one of the things that we're neglecting in healthcare. Um, the, the spiritual, emotional, mental aspect behind getting better, behind making improvements is huge. And we know that through research, right? We know, we know that through the data. However, you can't, you know, you can't capitalize on mental health as far as people being happy and emotion, but to really create an environment where people can get better uh, and make their own personal choices, you need this like haven, right? And it, where you have more than five minutes with a doctor, because now we've yeah. all gotten used to walking in, you've got five minutes, right? And then you're, they give you a prescription or they tell you what the, the deal is and then they send you home or they come to your hospital room, they review, review the charts and then they say, oh, we're going and do one, two, three, and it's not their fault. They just don't have time. So um, I think your vision is, like I said earlier, very commendable. And I think bringing in Gaz, and I know she hasn't spoken a lot, but Gaz, just so the audience knows, Gazella, sorry, <laughs> it's, I call her Gaz, but um, Gazella Jabin is a businesswoman that has been um, celebrated worldwide in major magazines, major social and media outlets, and in the business and healthcare community because of what she's done. So Jorgen, um, one of the things, you know, we always talk about life is tough. And I always say one of the things that makes you get through the tough time is your inner circle, right? Your, your people that you decide to depend on no matter what in the good and the bad. And so I'd love for you guys to talk about how this partnership came together sure. and how uh, God's is part of this project. Yeah. 
Okay, so guys, if you don't mind, I'm going to actually start how I actually, and then I'm going to obviously let you talk for yourself. But I um, I was the one who found gas. Um, so Because um, <laughs> she's uh, famous, right? She's, yeah, no, yeah. seriously. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Uh, because a lot of people say like, like the opposite to us. No, I was the one who found gas. I was follow her story. I got very fascinated about her. Uh, as a human being, as and also as a woman, so I was the one which was three. It's pretty much exactly three years ago now. I was reaching out to you, uh, and we got uh, from my point of view, we got uh, such a, a deep connection on a spiritual level, there, spiritual and also on an emotional level right away. I actually invited you, and I, 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 I if my recollection is right. Uh, we started to talk about this Cyprus project right away. And what is like what I, uh, I know what I'm good at and I know what I'm not good at. And I'm a visionary guy. I'm so depending that I have people around me who can structure up things, knowing the marketing and all the kind of things. And I felt like this is what gas has. And more important, um, gas is a very a sweet, loving, very warm-hearted person, yes. have this both values. So I invited the guests over here. Uh, we decided to go over here in January 2020. And um, uh, that was right before the pandemic. We flew over here. We actually flew from uh, Manchester and was flew over here. And the thing is that what we have not discussed and talked about, which I just can mention, this research center then become a whole uh, community. So we are building now a community. And the vision is then it's going to be like a smaller hospital, which is going to start with a wellness clinic. And there is a lot of, I have people who is like, uh, um, uh, doing also, there, there will be like a school also, already up to like from the first grade up to the ninth grade. So there's a lot of things is in this project, but I, we rented a car and what we're building everything is really, you have 180 degrees ocean in front of you, then you have 180 degree, degrees uh, chain of mountain, and it's really like a virgin island. Nothing is there. So I drew gas over there and said to her, okay, so here is what it's going to be. Here's where we're going to start at. And do you remember what you said actually? One of the first things you said when I showed, do you remember that? Yes, I do. Okay. <laughs> um, I, I don't know whether you want to say it or are you want me to say it? Uh, I, I, can, yeah, I can say it and you can probably add. Uh, you say to me, Jürgen, a yes opportunity of fantastic things can happen here. And that was like, okay, wow, this person is the right person for the project. So now I'm going to let you <laughs> obviously speak for yourself. <laughs> well, first of all, um, thank you for having us anyway. I just wanted to say that, um, yeah, paths don't just cross accidentally and the connections are an energy pull. And when you are faced with um, door openers in life, you have to bravely tread into that space, into that door and be be kind of resigned to the fact that, that is, this is leading me somewhere. And the adventure side of who we are as people, we do. And yes, Jürgen is right. I didn't go looking. I wasn't looking. I was minding my own business, actually. <laughs> <laughs> he pulled you over, God. <laughs> I was, I was just, I was just breezing on by my own little air sign way, you know. Um, I was, and, uh, and and sure enough, you know, this Viking comes knocking on my door and says, "Hey," and uh, so no, when we went um, over there, for sure, I, I, as soon as I stepped out the car, that breeze of the ocean, the breeze around me, the behind look of the mountains, yeah. you take a moment, yeah. and you're like, "Is this real?" Like people, when I've shared that feeling, they said it's like sounds like safe haven, a safe haven. And you used the word, uh, Christina, before haven, and people feel like, is there such a place on the planet, safe haven? And that allowed me also to think that the vast space for to breathe in was endless, but the opportunity opportunities that could be created 
could also be endless as well. And that's where the scope is allowing your mind to expand with the thought of what visionary people can do and what the right people aligned can make that happen. And that's kind of why I was all in. And so that's that's kind of where I come in on the scene. <laughs> My background is completely different. My completely different background was I'm a more of a a, a business person. If you if you kind of look at from my background, I fought for education and now I deliver education. And coming from suppressed background to expressive self of mine, I broke a lot of barriers, I broke a lot of molds, and I broke a lot of spaces out there to say no more. We cannot have this. We got to change. Yeah. And change is good. And change is different. And change is needed. And change is inevitable. And for me, it was you know what. There are so many people crying out for that change. There are so many people that are wanting to be counted. There are so many people. And my own personal journey, having lost my uh, husband to cancer, was that he was misdiagnosed because so many people got it wrong. And back to something you said earlier on, uh, Christina, was that people get misdiagnosed because the doctors don't have time. So you go in with a symptom. They got very limited time. Yes, you are suffering with not lacking, you know, of energy, lacking of sleep. Maybe you're depressed. So when somebody is clinically diagnosed with anxiety and depression and then later results, you persevere and results show that you're actually dying of cancer. Something like that serious is why change needed to happen. So from bringing my own personal story of what I went through, misdiagnosis 15 times, uh, of, of my late husband w- was the fact that that we persevered because things were adrift. We realized that actually there could have been a lot more done if we had more knowledge, more experience, more research, more understanding, and more that we could have done holistically as well in everyday life. But as uh, another thing was that the epigenetics in the way that we live, in the way that we treat it, in the way the life is today can really let the system down on an individual. And I think one of the things that for me, that remains to this point, the importance of this research and the change needed in what we're doing at Next Generation Research Center is that when you have a um, terminally ill patient at a hospital bed and you have other terminally ill patients actually supporting the patient that is dying because the hospital let the person down, that makes you really sit up and take note that actually we need change. So therefore, when he has been neglected of an emergency code buzzer to press for assistance and other ill patients, terminally ill patients are rescuing another patient, being patients themselves, where was the hospital support? Where was the actual care for the individual? Because a lifeline, there is only one lifeline. And if we cannot see that to research, to do more, to get people educated, to find alternative means as well as the allopathic medicine side of benefits and also overall, Everyone matters and every life is precious and every moment counts. And those moments sometimes are stolen. And something that was stolen from my world was something that I can't bring back. And so the passion for driving forward the change is why I wrote my book, which literally did. And the book, as you know, um, is called Loved, Lived, Lost. And the story that is really all about, yes, you're fortunate enough to find love. But then when you have lived, you enjoy the life and you want to do good through experience. And then when you lose, it's lost, but somebody stole it. That could have been a different story. So so therefore, what we're doing, and when Jürgen told me about Cyprus and the research and everything, that meant, you know what? It's about time we did more. It's about time that people were educated more. It's about that the change needed to happen in a different kind of way, that all aspects of care are needed from a holistic approach And I come from an Asian background because we only ever worked with holistic therapies of all remedies. They used to call it all wives tales. But, you know, they did this and you tell your mother, I've got a stomachache. And then she gives you these seeds and they're like, what is that? And they'll do you good. And they were good. And they did do good. And that's where people have never seen the power of the natural remedies presented for us on Mother Earth that we never really explored. And um, and that education is what's needed around the world as well. Well, I. I love what you just said. And and guys, thank you so much for sharing your heart and your knowledge. Um, I think one of the things I've always respected about you since I've I've met you, and when I met both of you, by the way, um, I still remember, and I, I think I said this on your talk, guys, uh, when we when we did the episode, I um, 
you know, when I first met you guys, I was actually in Florida working on another project and it changed my direction on that project because um, this was something when I heard about what you all were doing that I believed in and I knew that was very important. And I agree with Jorgen, this place in Cyprus and, and with you guys, this is a place we can do things like this that will impact national, international research, right? Globally in healthcare and wellness. But I think one of the things guys with you that I always go back to when I talk to you every time is you've been hurt. You know, I've been hurt. I'll be honest. I've, I've had cancer, lost, you know, had a child with cancer, um, gone through things where, and I know you have too, where I was suppressed or, you know, things haven't changed a great deal. Like people think <laughs> you still have a lot of racism. There's still a lot of sexism. There's still a lot. And, 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 we don't need to be victims, but back to Jorgen's point, we need to be compassionate and understanding and be realistic and talk about it. But I, what I love about you guys and what I saw from the beginning is despite this pain, despite the past, despite what you go through, instead of going inward, and I know we all need to do that at first, right, when we're handling pain, but you have accepted this in life and you're using it to help others. It has driven you to, instead of never talking about the pain, being able to share, to make people's lives better so that they can feel compassion, so they can feel united. And, and so one of the things about both of you that I really um, learned and, and immediately felt and then learned to really love is the fact that you didn't stop with one thing you kept going and you're keeping this legacy going that you're making this impact for others so that not just what you're doing now, but for generations, you're going to impact health and wellness. And guys, it would have been very easy for you after going through the pain of losing your husband and seeing a healthcare system that was broken to just go inward and not help fix it. I feel like I connect with that because it was, you know, very easy for me to do that too, but I chose not to. And Jorgen, it would have been easy for you not to travel 30 times to Cyprus and to work <laughs> thousands of hours, right? But you guys are dedicated to making life better for others in this project. And you're taking a stand of, okay, traditional medicine's great, but look, let's look at natural. Like you said, guys, what, let's go back to this and spend time on this and take the time to research it. And again, I keep saying this, but it's highly commendable. And it's something that people need to know about. Like, I think the fact, Jorgen, that you've built this stem cell clinic that people can go to from around the world, this wellness clinic where they can come and get skincare, where they can come and get classes on psychology, yoga, astrology, also acupuncture, a whole gamut of things. Yes, they'll have the traditional treatment, but you mm -hmm. guys are taking it a step. You know, you have you have things covered in the front, in the back and at the side of people. And I always say that I always feel this spiritual energy around me in the front, in the back, at the side. It's not just me. Right. And I you guys have built this solution and you're not just building it. You're researching it. And that's what I love. So I'd love to hear more about the project. I know I'm involved, um, but I'd love for you guys to share how people can get involved and where they go to get involved, because I my understanding is you will be taking people into Cyprus where they can also travel and be part of this project. Yeah, that's just correct. It's actually going to start up. I mean, we are um, it's going to start up for really as 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 we are talking about yeah, people are just seeing like people are just seeing that like for example myself they see like this very positive side because this is my personality they see me <laughs> traveling and things like that all this is true but there is also it's a lot of work behind it and you have to if you're doing a project like this you have to realize it's going to be a lot of uh, obstacles. It's going to. There is time when you're feeling like I, I don't. <laughs> I want to jump off. And it's basically from my point of view experience that you're getting attack from people organization from more the allopathic, uh, like the more the allopathic. Um, 
more allopathic um, um, things. Uh, I see there has been uh, some misunderstanding. I see there's one of my employees is coming here on board. She has my <laughs> last name, so I like that. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's is my... Uh, hey, Anna Korea. Hej, hej, vad hey. fint att du säger. Men vet du vad, det här, är inte, det här är inte för alla, utan det var jag som, nej, det var jag som lade in det av misstag där jag sa. Ja, men vad roligt att vi var med lite stund, men då, vi ses imorgon. Ja, det gör vi, ja. Hej så ja. länge. Ja. Okay. Hej då. Hej då. Hej då. Ja, it's pretty, uh, it's very sweet. Uh, she's my, uh, yeah, she's doing all the, like, uh, all the admin work. She's a very sweet lady. But uh, I put in that I'm going to have this meeting in the Google, uh, like, uh, Google uh, schedule. So she probably found it now. I thought that there was something for everyone, but it was just for them to know and that they cannot disturb me right now. I was just surprised there. Okay, so, uh, yeah, so I'm going to continue. So what I mean is that you have to be so devoted, you have to be so driven, you have to be so uh, um, uh, uh, not lost in all the details, things like that, and always come back to the bigger vision, bigger vision, which something like Asala has been a, a huge support for me to coming back to that. Yes, but all the work we'd be doing here now is that 2022, in the beginning of 2022, we're going to offer people to come down here. You're absolutely right. A different kind of wellness uh, package treatment where we're going to offer what I call the best of the best regarding allopathic medicine, especially when we talk about the exams and all this kind of thing, but also have different uh, uh, a treatment package, depending on like what is the reason for people coming down. But yes, and I have, we have, I have to say, uh, NGRC, Next Generation, uh, the Next Generation Research Center. We got now all the medical license for like basically rolling out everything. So yes, you are absolutely right. So you're also partnering with a couple of uh, the universities, right? Yes. A couple of the universities there um, on the research yes. and um, different government entities so that you guys can do this, not just in Cyprus, but in other countries as well. Correct? Ex exactly. We are. Uh, I mean, I've been dealing with actually with four universities, but we are uh, now choosing two of them when we have very close collaboration and uh, I have, and also my team, but me personally, I have a very close relationship with the government, which make it helping and supporting like a lot to get permission and license and yeah, these kind of things, which is uh, if I did that in my own country and in EU, that would take me forever, but yeah. I, can, I can do this process uh, processes uh, obviously right now very much quicker, yes. Well, I know that, you know, when I worked, um, when we worked on projects where we were trying to get drugs out and pharmaceutical, you know, human monoclonal antibodies, a lot of times we would go to the Middle East or to different countries where it's easier to get the base, the basic research done. Because, you know, in Europe and the United States, it's very expensive and um, takes a lot of time even to go back, you know, past that hurdle. So the fact that you've spent so much time to get this approved there in a clean, safe country, right, area that people can go to, I think um, is going to offer not just resources for pharmaceutical um, and biotech companies to go to and do further research later, but yeah. also for doctors and patients and people to go uh, to impact their own health care, which I know during this pandemic is a little bit harder to travel. But again, things are starting to open up finally, and we're getting past that. So I think you're going to have a site that's unique to anywhere else in the world. Yeah, no, absolutely right. And it's starting to open up, but we also have a permission actually from um, the tourist minister. We have a paper, so we have like permission to uh, actually, which is basically uh, the way it is right now is mainly from my own country, uh, Sweden, uh, where we can make helping people to come down here so much easier. But that's just because we are rolling out now from uh, Sweden, but we're going to be easy to then add also like other countries also there as well. So, yes. 
When will the first trip, I know that you've worked with 70 people and you've continued to work with them to develop this, but when will this open up to other people? I know you said, I think in the February or March um, for yeah. people to come to Cyprus. We actually, it's a little bit interesting that you are asking that because we got the, uh, everything done for the first trip, decided the date, which was which was decided because we were waiting for a certain kind of license, a uh, certain kind of permission. And that's, so the first trip will be uh, February 5th. February 5th. Mm, yeah, I can yeah. have to write that down. <laughs> so, Jorgen, <laughs> are you doing anything in December or no? You're going to be your first trip will be February 5th? Yeah, uh, December, uh, December, February 5th, which we really open up. We're doing like a pre launching, which you obviously <laughs> know because you have been very, yeah. very uh, <laughs> like active with that kind of thing. We're doing what we call like a New Year's retreat, which will be like a 10 day. We have selected uh, people from Sweden mainly, which is they are traveling down here on the 26th and we're starting up this uh, on the 27th, which is also like rolling out the uh, uh, same kind of things there, but we're doing like a pre launch where we have handpicked uh, people actually. Uh, where, where, uh, where, yeah, I'm going to let you, where you have basically also like a key role in this uh, things here. So. Yeah, I think that'll be great because you'll have people that you can expose to the project and, and they'll be like ambassadors for you guys to get the word out there. Because I think with each group you bring in, and I know you're starting with Sweden, but it's just going to explode. Um, you're going to have a wait list. I know that's really long <laughs> after this yeah. is launched. And you're also sending back people with product. Like some people will be starting the research before and then they will be doing additional that's my understanding for about two years, at least in this first round of projects. Exactly. That's exactly what it is. Uh, uh, we're going to start. We basically, we are now launching it here just in a few days. Uh, but the first group is coming down here, what I know, right before uh, New Year, which they will be the first people involved in this research, what you, you now described is going to be for uh, two years, yes. And where will they stay, Jorgen? Because I heard Gaz talk about, the, I've been to Cyprus, so I know what she's talking about when it takes, and I'm, I mean this, it takes your breath away. The ocean and the mountains and all of the things around, it's, it is a safe haven. I mean, it is an area where you feel like you're somewhere completely different and you're really getting to relax and really get your life, you know, grounded, I think is a word I'd like to use because I think it's very important. So where will people be staying when they come and how have you organized that? And I'm asking that question because again, scientifically beautiful is the name of this podcast, but we talk about life is tough. And I always like to say, okay, it's tough, but we've got to take breaks and take care of ourselves or we can't take care of others. So I'm not trying to promote what you're doing. What I'm trying to get people to know is there's a, a, a place that's as beautiful as anywhere in the world where they're going to have um, ability to be treated from a healthcare and wellness perspective and things they can't possibly, treatments they can't possibly get in their country, right? Especially yeah. with the stem cells and the different pharmaceutical exactly. companies involved. So where will they be staying and how will that be? And I hope I'm not overstepping my bounds. I just wanted people... <laughs> Because yeah. I, I really want people to understand you're building this community of wellness, yeah. right? I think, yeah. yeah. They're, they're all staying at Jorgen's place, aren't they? <laughs> That's what I was wondering, guys. Are you both inviting <laughs> all of us over? Yeah. <laughs> the, the biggest balcony place that everybody yeah. will be coming to, yeah. Guys, he, he's can't. on Zooms and he's he's on the balcony, or I see that he's outside, and I think, yeah. just don't rub it in. I'm yeah. in Nashville. <laughs> he, he, he just yeah. said, everybody, you're welcome to share and be my neighbor, so hey. Yeah, I was so happy because I have this, like, beautiful... Uh, Flash that recently got. I was so happy. So I wanted to show everyone. So <laughs> recording oh it, which probably was a mistake because a lot. Of, oh, I would love to come and come and uh, come and sit on your butt. Guys, he's <laughs> like, I know that you're stuck. <laughs> 
<laughs> over yeah. there, guys. But look at where I am. <laughs> look, look at what you could have had, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When are you going over there, guys? I don't need to get off the subject. But no, 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 that's all right. Yeah. It's just when, when my aeroplane says, right, this is a ticket for you to get to Cyprus because that balcony needs a female on the top there. <laughs> 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 it better be me. That's what you're saying. <laughs> so, so will they stay in a place? Yeah. You, gonna, they, yeah. Okay. I mean, we actually have, yeah, we are building this community. It's being built at the moment. And that's it. The whole plan is going to be built in. It says seven phases, but it's probably going to be more phases. But that's to be built right now. But what we have arranged, because we have to also consider that we are in the middle of a pandemic. And the people like my network, and I think like also for you guys, we have a lot of people who doesn't want to take the vaccine as it is. And I respect like both. Uh, both yeah, I uh, uh, yeah, yeah, I have no problem. I always uh, respect like a personal opinion. Yeah. I always say that as long as it's based on correct information, uh, yeah. then it's like, yeah. But what it is, is that uh, we have a permission that everyone who coming and, and going to visit our project, you don't have to have a PSR test. You just have to have an antigen test, okay? But if you are fully vaccinated, you don't need to have anything. But since I have so many people who does not want to take the vaccine, we have one hotel which is called like the Riverside, like the Mountain Riverside Hotel, uh, uh, which is a beautiful uh, up in the mountains. And that means that there is five days quarantine, but this is a huge area also connected to the mountains. So we have the permission that they have five days quarantine in that hotel, but that is a such a beautiful, huge place. So people can walk. You don't, you are not stuck in your room. Okay. Yeah. You are, you can walk there up in the mountain. You can do, we're going to have lectures every day and this kind of thing. So we entertain people and we can, we will also have treatment at that place, which we have the permission for. So, but we need to take that in consideration and make the best of this, uh, uh, of this uh, situation, but all other kind of people, we have now an agreement with, which is called Acapulco uh, Resource, which is front of the ocean. We have the mountains again, uh, which is a, also a huge place. And there is what we're going to have people at the first time when they're coming down here. But there is a lot of options also. So. And will they have exposure to, I know they're going to be doing exposure to the research project, but will they have exposure oh, yeah. to the wellness yeah. clinic and all the? Yeah, they're going to have exposure to everything. But what I mean that for, since we have the pandemic, if the first five days, since they have that, I have the permission to take the staff and the re like the wellness clinic and take that into this hotel okay. resort. So no one is going to like, no one has to worry about everything. I've been working to get all these things lined up so everyone is going to be like happy. Um, no one is going to feel they are restricted. No one's going to feel like, oh, now I'm stuck here. I cannot do it. No one no. is going to. No, I don't uh, think they're no going to feel, feel, no, being by the. No. <laughs> Guys, take yeah. me to the resort. <laughs> Put me on the water. You, you will not want to get back home. And I mean, no. that's it. It's just it. You'll be want to yeah. stay there. No, I remember last time I was in Cyprus, I didn't want to come home. It was beautiful. It's like Santorini. I mean, it's just it's just beautiful. Um, so yeah. I think yeah, and I is. I think that will help people overall just being able to relax and get away. Um, one of the things about life, right, um, is that we're so busy and we're so worried and we're doing so many things. And I say this all the time. I never want to be part of a project where I'm leading with fear. I want to be part of a project where we're here to find solutions and to give people hope. Right. And that's what you guys have offered. So it's an amazing opportunity um, to do that. And, uh, you know, Jorgen, I want to say this before we get off the call, because I know we've talked about this. But first of all, I want you guys, to, wh where do they go to learn more about Cyprus? And then I'm going to ask the last question that I, the tough question I'm going to ask you guys before we get off. But wh where do people go so that they can find out more about your project? 
Uh, they actually go into NGRC, Next Generation Research Center, but NGRC.org. Uh, uh, Gaz, do I say in like the right thing now? I think I do in that. Yeah, it, it's not dot .life, no? Uh, no, it's actually changed uh, till dot .org. Okay. It did that a few days ago because we had a little problem with it. So NGRC.org. Okay, ngrc.org, you guys, yeah, to go exactly. and find out more about the project. So before we get off, and, and by the way, Jorgen, I'm going to be sending this on and posting this too, because I want people to go to your site and learn mm -hmm. about it and get involved in this project, because even if they don't start now, they could get involved sometime in the period of the next three, six, nine months, up to two years, right? And by that time, I know the plans you guys have are to do multiple research projects and multiple things for people. So I think that um, you guys getting exposed to that now from around the world will be an incredible opportunity. I know you're opening it to Sweden first, but I'm assuming that the United States will be able to do it pretty near in the future. Um, and I want to thank you guys for this. And I'll, I'll keep telling the audience so that they are directed to your site. But before we get off, I would love for each of you guys to share what you've done um, to overcome the tough bad parts of life and how hard it is because again you're sitting on the show and you're smiling and you guys look happy and you are happy but I know you've been through a lot to get to where you are so if you guys can give the audience um just some advice on what you've done or some hope because I think sharing like you do guys with things that have happened um is an important step to helping others but also providing what it what you did to get you through those tough times is something that I think we all need to share. So, um, you know, Jorgen, you from a healthcare doctor perspective, I'd love to hear it. And you guys from a business perspective and personal perspective with both of you, I'd love to hear your answers to that for the audience. So, uh, so I'm going to, now I'm going to definitely let you start. Oh my goodness. Okay. Well, from a personal point of view, I mean, <clears throat> you know, when you get a life where you feel like I want to call it a day, in life because something really took everything from you yeah. and you you want to go to the point of it's la vie, you know time but then you have there's something inside of you that's that's embedded deep that is not about you anymore it's about what you were here for and for me it was very much that yes life has been tough things have hit me hard things that I didn't expect to hit me so hard knocked me to the floor where I could barely breathe to survive but then I had to think about others. I was here for a purpose. So then you got to pick yourself up. Then you have to put yourself on the back burner and put yourself on the front burner for the others because you're there for a mission to accomplish for others as well. And I think in my personal case with Martin, yes, I lost Martin 25 years of my life with somebody that I thought that was the end of, beginning of and end of. And I could have kept the, 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 the duvet over my head and the curtains closed and died. But then I had three children and they were my reasons to breathe, to live, because they were dependent on me. So it wasn't about me. It was about them. It's about somebody else. The same thing here. Jürgen and I haven't seen each other for a year and a half plus through the pandemic. And all the work that's gone on is you're doing it virtually. Sometimes it's really tough and the ride is so much. But then we think to ourselves, it's not just about us. It's just not about Gaz. It's not just about Jürgen. It's not about Gaz and Jürgen. It's actually about the whole project overall for the for the change that we've been here to deliver of servant driven leaders where you're actually making a change for the rest of the world. And if we've come with nothing, we go with nothing. If we've made a ch change in that point and we've been given a duty to serve, then that duty has to be justified in a beautiful way. And in your case and this program, scientifically beautiful. That's the tough part of when you're doing the job more beyond than yourself for the others, because that's the mission you're on. That's how I would look at uh, riding the tough ride is keep busy, keep your mission. And it's not just about you. Everybody it's like for me. I don't say I'm the only one that lost somebody to cancer. I will not be the first and I will not be the last. I'm not the only one that was a victim of possible death. I will not be the first and I will not be the last. There are many projects and programs happening in life. We will not be the first. We will not be the last. Therefore, the tough rides within the deep heart of us, which is more to give than to gain and go with the flow and detach of all personal uh, you know, gains and truly 
the flow will then flow naturally. And that's the, the beauty of what lies with my heart. That's beautiful, guys. And I know it's sincere. So thank you for sharing that. Because I um, I think that's one of the key factors is realizing it's not about you. You know, it's not. I, I've had to do that, too. When I get upset or someone says something or does something, it's not about me. Right. It's about a bigger purpose. And that's why I think you've left a legacy already that you will continue to lead, um, to, to le- leave and to lead with. Right. So thank you for sharing that. I know it's been tough and I know that you've just kept going and, and, and it is easy to pull the duvet <laughs> over the head and close the vines. I've done it um, before, but then you just have to make yourself get up. And I see that with you all the time. And just so the audience knows, Guys also went through hate crimes and it's a you know story she shared on one of the episodes that if you guys haven't had the chance, go back and listen. But she's made it through that to be who she is today and to be the wonderful, beautiful woman that she is that helps others. So thank you, guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and then we've got Jorgen. I haven't heard anything. Jorgen. I, I work with guys in Jorgen all the time, <laughs> like we're, yeah. I'm like, but I, Jorgen, I haven't heard, you know, I know you've been, we've all been through things that are tough um, and you don't have to share anything and you don't want to, you're welcome to, but I would love to hear what you've gotten through or something that's been tough. And then also what you did to get through it, despite how hard it was. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. I mean, the, I'm no exception that anyone else we are going through life, which is, um, where you feel that you don't really want to be around anymore. At least for myself, I have had this, uh, like I want to basically just stop my life. Um, uh, but I'm going to actually one of my, uh, as, um, as a kid, and you probably had, I told Gas this, but as a kid, I was a stuttering guy, actually up to my teenage. I was so stuttering that much, so I I didn't talk much at all. Um, because, I mean, I was not just stuttering a little bit. I was, like, extremely stuttering. So for me, to talk like this with other people, that was out of question. That was like really out of question. So I had, as a kid, as a teenager, I had just one dream to be able to speak freely. Uh, because to be a stuttering um, on that level, I was. Uh, so for me, I basically worked. I find, I let my parents find a woman who helped me. Uh, and I worked with this seven days a week and it took me four years. And I, every time I talk about this, because I'm trained how to use my tongue, how to use my mouth, because every time I talk about this, my stuttering is right there and I can easily get into that kind of things. But that is, if I look at, uh, and also like I, I got such a severe back pain as a teenager. So I was like on medication all the time. So that kind of drive to be able to, yes, because when you're stuttering that much, especially if you're a kid and teenager, people try to avoid you. People are feeling that is embarrassed. So that has been a such a drive. And I have been on the stage for like over 30 years. So I have had speeches for like thousands of people. Like, I mean, I probably have, have speeches to all, like all together 500,000 people. So every time I'm going through a very tough time, I'm always thinking about this kind of background. If I was able to do this, I can do whatever really and that's has been but this is a very personal uh, thing for me and then i have always been so incredibly important is like why is some people going through life so tough and still they come out so strong and some people are like are not and to make that really like deeper thoughts and if i'm gonna just if I just gonna uh, uh, break it down to a few things is that we all know pretty much what we are feeling really good at, like when we're feeling good. We also know 
whatever we put ourselves in the body, drinking, eating habits, what kind of people we are around us, we pretty much know these kind of things make me to maybe or keep my anxiety a little bit better while I'm doing this. But these kind of things can maybe be a little tough, but this kind of thing is actually going to help me to go through this like a little bit easier. I have to accept that this period now, I'm not going to feel good, but I can actually do these things and it's going to be tougher in the long run. Or I can do this and I know, I know that these things will actually help me. So now I'm going to come back to basic what you're asking. I am... Because we all know to connect to these habits, maybe they are not a little bit distracted or whatever it is. It's it's like for most people, <laughs> that is the easiest. But I have always, always when I went through, I had a like I had an episode like six, seven years ago when I really felt I don't want to be around anymore. Everything what I believed in is just got lost. And I I, I really thought that I'm not going to survive there. But still, there was something with my background and everything. And also, you don't have to have any background, what I describe it. I always say to people that we are still, we have one brain, what we can train. We have one body. We have one conscious. We have a a possibility to like explore spiritual things, just simple, basic things. We have the choice to choose this or or choose that. So when I have had a really tough time, I always, always really force myself, remind myself, doing this, Jürgen, choose this now. Shows this. You don't have to do everything, but just shows few of these things and always remind myself that you will go through in there. And the most important thing with this, I always felt, cut out all the people where is not helping you to feel better. Invite people where you knowing they're coming from love coming from support they are not they 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 just want your best support you in the best way that's is that's it it sounds so easy but it's not that easy when you're not feeling good and i also say that that doesn't mean that if someone gets really really sick or whatever it is, it doesn't mean that the story, what Gas was saying about her uh, late husband, that the story will end up perfectly and good. Then, because Martin he passed away, I'm mean, just going to take that uh, like that example. But you giving yourself the best opportunity to actually at least you feeling that you're giving yourself the best opportunity. I can go on for a long time, but I'm going to stop that. Well, I appreciate you sharing that. That was, um, I, I really appreciate you sh- sharing that because I think it was really important. It's hard to share our weaknesses. We all have weaknesses and we all have um, things we've gone through that have been very hard for us. And Jorgen, I'm just going to say, I'm glad you're here. And then I'm glad that we are all working together. I love what you said about surround yourself with people that make you feel good and get rid of the people or or get rid of the relationships that are bad for us, right? Because it it can make us physically, mentally, emotionally ill. And I think, like you said, that's not always easy to do, but it's important to do. It's important for us to take care of each other, be compassionate and do the right thing and be examples. And um I'm so thankful to be on the journey with you all as we try to help people. Um, this is not a one to two year journey. You know, it's it's a journey that will last a lot longer. As Jorgen's already proved, he's done this for years and paved the way. Right, guys? <laughs> for, and then you have too. And I'm just thankful to be on the journey with you all um, as we try to do the right thing. And one of the things I've always felt from both of you is that you accept me for who I am, regardless of what that is. And uh, hopefully you feel that from me as well. And I, um, I know that you have. 100%, yes. 
I hope you I hope you always know that. Uh, and 100%. I you always uh, you always do, Christina. Yeah. And I will speak uh, for both of us as well that one thing I've noticed, no matter how life has been even tough for you personally, but even the journey of your work, career and changes, your heart has always been led in a true spirit, true way and authentic in every piece of the way. And you just want to do good for so many and care, the caring part of your world, the fact that even to have us here to share for the people that you care that a message from all three of us collectively in one energy in a space can make a difference to other people listening into this podcast as well is such a such a valuable gift alone because that's our sharing vulnerability in a space that we're comfortable to share because in it, we know it may just make that big difference for somebody else. And we both hold you in great respect and a lot of love for you, for who you are and what you're doing. And so proud to have you with us on this journey. Thank, thank you, guys. I, I, I know this series is going to help people because um, you guys know that my first background is psychology and counseling. And I know from all of the research and everything I've been exposed to that if someone can feel and hear hope and listen to what other people have been through, it can mean the difference between life and death, right? Between a decision of taking one's life or hurting someone else or doing the right thing. So today we went through things that I wasn't really expecting to go through, but I hopefully people will hear this episode and know that, you know, your project is open to healing, not out of fear, but out of compassion. And I love bringing both of you guys and your books together um, to really share the story, which is your story of how you're helping the world. So thank you for being my friends. Thank you for being on this journey with me. And I know we have a lot of healing to do, right? Because life is hard for people. And uh, I know that we're going to. So thank you so much for being on this episode. I much love.